Hello and welcome to our first uh, release uh, field code release update call. Uh, I presume my name is Mike Holder. I am the uh, content manager here at Field Code. Uh, and I presume you've already gone through the release notes last week. We released on Thursday. I'm just going to go through uh, the release and show you how it all works. Uh, so the first thing we have released is the cooperation partner. A cooperation partner is a new type of account and system connection. Uh, as you may already know, we, are here, we have account partners. Account partners are partners that work within your field code account. Uh, and a cooperation partner is someone that has their own field, field code account where you can connect your account to their account and send tickets to them and they can send tickets to you. So first thing first, let's go through how to create a cooperation partner. We have a new page here under the access uh, menu, cooperation partners. You simply go here. And since this is my company, I want to connect with my partner company. So I'm going to request from them their business key. Their business key is here. And they can find their business key here. You just need to get a copy of it from them. Go ahead and hit the plus button. Enter their business key here. And you'll see their partner name, uh, company name show up right here. Uh, then you're going to send an email with the pin where they're going to take this pin and then plug it into their side, and that's the connection. So now I received the pin. I'm going to copy it. You see here already uh, we have a waiting for confirmation from their side. So what happens is they need to go to their side and then back their account here. And they received an email with a pin code in it. They're going to copy this pin code in there and save it. And as you see, it warns you because you need to select a project. Now, the partner company, I'm going to send tickets from my company or my field code account to their field code account. So on their side, they need to choose which project they want my tickets to go into. So in this case, I have created my company projects. So all the projects coming from my company are going to go into this project on their side. So once you have the project selected and the pin in, you hit the save button, and now I have a confirmed um, connection with my company as a subcontractor. And the same is on their side. Now it's confirmed with my partner company. As you see, I have two connections with my other partner and my partner company. I'm the contractor. I'm sending them tickets. Uh, this works both ways. If I want, if my partner wants to send me tickets because they want to work with me, they would do the same thing. Uh, they would just request my business key and go through the same process. On their side, they add me. I receive an email. I plug in the pin on my side, and now we have a bi-directional connection where I can send them tickets and they can send me tickets. The advantage of this is I can send tickets to their field code account, uh, and they can work on it with their dispatchers, their engineers on their own time at their own time. And as they're working on their ticket, it'll update in my side. Now let's send them a ticket. Another thing is um, tickets that have parts or poodles will also be sent over. So if I have a part as this uh, ticket here has a part to it, it is also with a poodle. What's going to happen is it's going to send the ticket over to my partner's account. And if they don't have this poodle already saved in their account, it's going to create a poodle in their account and send this part information. So let's go ahead and send this ticket over to my partner. There are three ways, as you may already know, assign partner here directly in ticket details. And we also have the context menu where we assign partner directly or schedule ticket. Schedule ticket as we have this recommendation button here. We hit the recommend button and I have my account and I have my partner's account. We also have a new um, icon for a cooperation partner so you can quickly notice which partner it is. The orange one, as you know, is account partner. The new icon is for cooperation partners. Um, yeah, so you can easily spot which part you need. So I'm going to select this partner here and I'm going to save it. This ticket will disappear from the dispatching ticket pool and move directly into the outsource tickets where it's going to wait there for, um, for action from my partner's side. So now it's sitting here with the part and appointment status. I'm going to go back to my partner account. And right here, you see this is my company's projects. This because it's where my company sends tickets and it goes into this project on my partner's side. So now they're going to action this just like any other ticket that comes into their system. 
uh, they're going to go schedule a ticket, but first let's check out the parts. So you see a part also came with it. Um, from my company system, and you'll notice here in the Pudo, it created the Pudo directly from my company's account directly into my partner's account. So the next time I send them a ticket, it doesn't have to create it. It already have it in there uh, and, and they can use it. All right. So let's just go through this ticket. I'm going to schedule to an engineer. OK, what's going on here? OK, all right, so normally it's going to go through the FMA possibly where the engineer will work on the ticket on site, uh, report on the ticket and close the ticket on his side. To speed it along, we're going to report it directly from field from uh, workplace here. And save. And now you see that the status here is pending right on site. It's going to go to close here in a minute. Okay, it's really quick. So this now is sitting and closed. On their side, the ticket is done. On our side, the ticket was closed, but since we have a validation step within our workflow, it has moved to the ticket pool. Um, every ticket that comes in that has a validation step on the, on the company side will automatically have a ticket info added where it's just letting you know that the partner was removed. And it's a good way for your dispatchers to catch the tickets to make sure everything's done. And now my dispatchers now can then verify the report is all correct. If they need to, they can resend this ticket back to them uh, by going to the ticket and just resending it back to the partner or signing the partner again. And what's going to happen on the partner side, it's just going to create a brand new ticket on the partner side where they can rework it with a new engineer, a new reporting form, um, and uh, close it again on their side, and it'll come back. Same as on our side, though, it's just going to have the one ticket it's going to update. If we send it multiple times, it's going to have multiple interventions. Uh, if we send it five times, it's going to have five interventions in here on the original ticket. On the partner side, it's going to have five separate tickets on the partner side, what they work on. Once they close it on our side, the original ticket, we close it just like a normal ticket, and it's done. And that's cooperation partner. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to go to the Q&A section and ask your questions. All right. Excuse me. All right, the next one is SMPT settings at a project level. As you know before, we could add SMTP server for the, uh, for the whole account under the accounts menu. Um, and this is the only place you could add your own SMPT settings uh, for the account, but this was covering the whole account. We need to have, or it's possible now to do it per project. So now at a project level, each project can have its own SMT server sending out emails through its own servers um, or whatever niche you need it to. So let me just show you here. Where am I at? We have SMTP settings here at the in the project page. I just had a spoof uh, SMTP server here, uh, just to show you what happened. So now, how you know it's working? Um, in automated actions, you can see. Let's say you're creating an automated action, send out an email. Uh, we have a new warning here. If you don't see any from anything in the from field here, we kindly ask you to check your uh, project page, uh, project settings on the basic tab, and you'll see here for Project Blue, I didn't have any SMTB settings, so see here it's just coming from the default SMT server field code account management server. Now for Walker Photo, I did set up an SMTT, and as you see, it's coming from WalkerPhoto at email.com and not from field code. Uh, and this also applies to the email section here as well. So if I want to send out email from here, no SMT server. And here I'm using Walker Photo. So it also works in sending emails from the workplace and sending emails through automated actions. On to the next one. We have revamped the ticket scoring. 
But what I mean by revamp, we have adjusted the point scaling. You're now able to name uh, a ticket scoring, and you can add more than one filter. Uh, the old scoring was one through ten, but that was leading to very limited ticket scoring. So we increased the number to 100, which allows our users to have much greater ticket scores, more finite ticket scoring, um, makes it all around better. You can add more than one filter because ticket scores need more than one filter now. Um, and the big change is that before, if I had multiple ticket scores and the system was checking for ticket scores and it found three ticket scores matched, um, before we would take the average of that score minus before it was one through ten. So if it was five, 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 the average would be around seven or so. Um, now, if it finds the ticket score at five, 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 in this case, 50, 50, 50, it's going to take 150. It's going to take the sum of the score uh, and use that for calculation. And we say that here as well. Uh, the maximum total score is 999 points. So if you have enough ticket score to where it adds up, to 999, that's the maximum highest ticket score you can have for matching ticket scores. Play with that. Um, if you do, if you do um, change your existing scores, you, you can feel free to do that. However, we do want to warn you that if you're doing this, um, if you have a lot of scores to change, do this outside of peak hours um, because it will take some time to reprocess tickets because it's going to have to go through the system and check the different scores and make sure it's all still the same or updating whatever. So please do this on off peak hours if you're changing scores um, at any time. Doesn't matter if it's even months from now, still always run off peak hours because it's going to have to recalculate some stuff. All right, moving on. Another cool feature is some companies. Uh, you guys have a lot of dispatch groups and you have certain dispatchers working on different dispatch groups and we have a lot of tickets here in the dispatch tab you can filter by group so it's easy to see but the other tabs didn't have that for instance ticket info is a big one if you have a lot of ticket infos here and you have a certain group you're working for you're not able to uh weren't able to search by group we have added dispatch group here so you can just see your dispatch group tickets as you need to in here uh, as well as the expert tab, we have now added the dispatch group in here, so you can easily switch by group. Okay. Another one is to do with absences. So if you have some users have um, absences, and before you could create an absence, but you couldn't. Uh, You could delete it before, but in case you accidentally delete it, you had to go and recreate the whole thing again. Now we can just reactivate this absence, and then you can edit it and change it, whatever you need to do. If you accidentally deleted it, same with all on-call duties. Uh, if you create on-call duty and, and cancel it, you can reactivate it and adjust the the and modify the uh, on-call duty. All right. Um, another fun one. Last time we introduced uh, optimization configuration, and we got some feedback from y'all. Um, so we have improved the user interface for creating optimization configurations. So we have the optimization tab here. Once you soon as you click on the custom profile, you'll notice right away that the header bar is different, and now is automatically the active switch, and it's a switch now rather than a button. Um, and it has a delete uh, profile button right here. So we're just going to create a couple here. So I want to create another one. So now we have the copy button that shows up here. So I can copy this one. And I'm going to create another one. And I'm happy with that. And you may notice that there's the buttons missing. We had before three buttons, create and activate, create and cancel. Uh, these buttons were confusing a lot of people and it wasn't very helpful. So now, once you're ready, you got everything done, you got your active switch. Also, you can now deactivate all of them. Before that was not an option, you had to have one active or delete them all. Uh, now you can have none active or as before, one active. 
All right, so we're going to set the one active. And now you just hit the save button when you want to save your optimization profile. And another thing, when you go back to it, now it is ordered by oldest at the top before it was it was vice versa. So now the oldest, the newest, the newest one that was created is going to be at the top. The oldest one is sorry, the oldest one is going to be at the bottom. The newest will be at the top. All right. Uh, another one is for interfaces. We now have uh, skills available for mapping, so you can talk to your counterpart or to your team, um, and you can start mapping skills for your in, for your system connections. Uh, you may notice here that the sidebar is also been um, adjusted, so now we have this nice solid green bar. Uh, the active page is much more noticeable now. Before it was this light blue and it had this little bar, and it was hard to see. Um, actually what active page you're in. So now this is, and it's also matching with the, the sidebar on this side as well. All right, another um, fix was the map. There was issues when, when messing around with tickets and so on and so forth, the whole map scale would change. Uh, if a user sets their map scale like this, they want it to remain like that. They don't want to make a change somewhere else and then the map scale changes. Uh, that should no longer be a problem. The map scale is going to change uh, to be wherever you set it to be. Um, we fixed an issue with the saving a profile in the admin panel. There's some issues with it not saving that that saves now. Uh, there has been some fixes for Safari 16.3 and under had some issues displaying the admin panel that has been corrected. Uh, so all the Safari users that are using 16.3 and below um, should work. The admin panel should work for them. Uh, we fixed an issue where there was some issues where dragging the ticket to the timeline, uh, the ticket would disappear. That's obviously not good, so uh, that's been fixed. Another one is in the automated actions, where if you added a phone number, It, before it was clipping off, as soon as you added this last one, it would start clipping off the screen, and then you could no longer uh, you can no longer see the, the the phone numbers. That has been corrected, as you can see. It now goes to the next line. Continues. And the final two. When scheduling tickets here before, you could create a time preference. As soon as you clicked on this. Uh, by default, we added five minutes to the current time. Um, that is no longer the case. As you see, it's 1624, it's 1624. Before it would be 1629, and you could start setting your time preference five minutes after you click the button. That's no longer the case. It's You can set the time anytime from right now. And the final one that I will go over is the search button uh, for the publish button has been corrected. So I'm in the wrong group. So before there's some issues with searching, um, it works as expected now. Feel free to please go check out our manual. Uh, you can find our manual here in the in the sidebar button. Go check out our manual and then go check out the rest of our releases. There's some small bugs that didn't go over and as always, we have the next planned release already planned for you, so please check it out uh, and prepare yourself for the next upcoming release for next month. That is all. Thank you for joining our first field code release update call. Thank you very much and. Have a great day.